and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Former Archbishop of Canterbury, Lord Carey, has spoken of his unwavering support for marriage at the launch of a new campaign this week. Coalition for Marriage has been formed to back the current one man and one woman legal definition of marriage and to oppose government plans to redefine it. Sam Mason reports. At a launch event in central London this week, Coalition for Marriage has set out its agenda to protect the current legal definition of marriage. The Coalition has the backing of politicians from both Houses of Parliament, as well as lawyers and religious leaders. Faith and non-faith organisations also back the campaign. Government Equalities Minister and Lib Dem MP Lynn Featherstone is due to publish a consultation document next month on redefining marriage. But campaign director Colin Hart told a press conference that the government should not bulldoze ahead without thought for the consequences. In March, the government will have a consultation. But the Home Secretary has already said it's a consultation about how and not whether marriage is redefined. The 24 million married people in this country are not even going to be asked whether they mind marriage being redefined over their heads. This is profoundly anti-democratic. The government is running away from this public debate. They are bulldozing ahead without any thought for the consequences. Lord Carey also criticised the government's plan, saying there is no mandate for change. The government has no mandate from the people to redefine marriage. And that is why we're gathered here today. We hope that they will think again. This matter is so serious and so important for our nation that we cannot allow this act of cultural and theological vandalism to happen. Conservative MP Fiona Bruce said that as a mother, she was concerned about implications for children in any change. I'm very concerned too as a mother, not just as a member of parliament, but as a mother, um, because I think that if we have uh, an arrangement within our society, which uh, we call marriage and know of as a stable, secure relationship for children to grow up in and to flourish, and reference has already been made today of uh, research that has shown uh, across uh, ages and across cultures that that committed relationship between a man and a woman gives children the best opportunity to flourish in terms of health, education and welfare, then I think we alter that, we review that, we change that at our peril. And Colin Hart sent out a rallying call saying that there's everything to play for. And when the public are given the facts, when they are told that the rights of marriage are already available through civil partnerships, a majority of the public back traditional marriage. So we believe there is everything to play for in this debate and we intend to win it and to hold on to the current definition of marriage, the most successful partnership in history. A special website has been set up to support the Coalition for Marriage campaign at c4m.org.uk. There's an online petition which the public can sign to support the current definition of marriage as being between one man and one woman. In just four days, the petition has received over 34,000 signatures. You can make your view count and add your name to the petition by simply completing this online form. And David Burroughs MP has revealed he received a death threat and hate mail after speaking out in support of traditional marriage. The Conservative MP for Enfield Southgate made the remarks during questions at the Coalition for Marriage launch. I've experienced myself since raising the issue of affirming uh, the traditional definition of marriage as a union of man and woman. I myself have been subjected to, um, to hate mail, to accusations of homophobia and to uh, death threat as well, which is just extraordinary when one is affirming what the law is as it stands and has done historically for hundreds if not thousands of years. And that's something which many, many people are concerned, whether they're of faith or none, and we must at the very least be able to have this debate in a reasoned manner that respects freedom. Earlier this month, the Archbishop of York, Dr John Sentamu, also received hate mail, some of a racist nature, after he voiced his support for traditional marriage, sparking a police hate crime investigation. The launch of C4M has created a considerable reaction this week. Former Tory MP Matthew Paris has suggested that the word marriage should be completely removed from legal language. Mr Paris, who is in a civil partnership with David Cameron's chief speechwriter, said... Do as they have done in South Africa. Make the partnership that two people of either sex may enter the same in law, regardless of their sex. Then remove the word marriage altogether from legal language. Amend the statute book. Call it, say, civil union. 
but Christopher Biggins, who is also in a civil partnership, told the ITV daytime show Leaves Women that he thought marriage should be reserved for a man and a woman. I'm very anti uh, wow. marriages because I think that is for heterosexual couples, and I'm sorry uh, how uh, a lot of you feel. But that was invented, not invented, but that was. That it doesn't matter. We can't. Yeah, we can't just get rid of everything. We have to hold on to something. Some news in brief now, and following a High Court ruling earlier this month, Local Government Minister Eric Pickles has written to every local council in England telling them that new laws restore their power to hold prayers at official meetings. Mr Pickles said that for too long the public sector has been used to marginalise and attack faith in public life, but this week the tables have been turned. We are striking a blow for localism over central interference, for freedom to worship over intolerant secularism, for parliamentary sovereignty over judicial activism and for long-standing British liberties over modern-day political correctness. Women are being granted abortions after telling doctors their baby is the wrong sex. In three cases, doctors were recorded by undercover reporters for the Daily Telegraph agreeing to end the life of unborn babies. Me and my partner went to France mm -hmm. for holiday and we had a blood test there and we found out that there's a really high chance that we're having a girl and that's not really appropriate for us right now, we were hoping for a boy. Um, so we're not looking to have this baby at the moment. And how certain are they about this fetal genetic? It, it's pretty, pretty certain, yeah, they, they don't tell you otherwise. I'm curious, do you have any reports? No, I didn't bring any of it with me, sorry. I didn't really think I needed to. No, no, I don't, I don't ask questions. Yeah. You want a termination, you want a termination. Yeah. Following the revelations, the Department of Health has spoken to the police and asked the General Medical Council to investigate the matter. Finally, a former world boxing champion has spoken on TV about his faith in God. Alex Arthur, who was a guest on BBC's Songs of Praise, told of how as a youngster a friend had introduced him to church and boxing on the same day. Alex rose through the boxing ranks and won a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in 1998. It was then he got a taste for the high life and the many temptations that went with his newfound fame. But a few years later his life was to take another turn after he was knocked to the floor, losing his world title. That proved to be a defining moment in his life. I remember waking up in the hospital bed that morning and thinking I've got to change everything. You know, and I had this really strong, strong feeling you know, inside myself telling me, you're doing everything wrong Alex, you need to change. You know, I can recall getting home, uh, picking up my Bible and, and just randomly opening it. And I randomly opened it at Sam's and, uh, and I can remember just starting to read some scriptures and, and it, was, <laughs> it was explaining to me in the scriptures how God disciplines you if, you if you go on the wrong track and it's because you're his child and he loves you and he, you know, and he wants the best for you. So, you know, he's not got a problem with basically giving you a, giving you a wake up call, you know, and it was just so shocking to me. Alex says he is grateful that the experience has taught him how his faith can help him deal with temptation when it comes. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.